It's been two weeks since I got Apple's Pro Display XDR and it's time to get honest. Was it really worth $6,000? Well, for me, yes, but I will have to say it's definitely not worth it for everybody that can afford it. Some of you guys should spend way less while others should actually spend more. And in this review, I'll explain exactly why and pit this aluminum slate against alternatives ranging from $1,500 all the way up to $40,000 and tell you why $6,000 isn't really overpriced. I'll talk about the strengths of the 6K and the one big issue that plagues it, which is causing some people to return them and why Apple had to make this compromise that not everybody will like. Let's start off with the design and I have to say that it's amazing. Sure, not everybody will like the look, but the all aluminum build makes it very rigid while also acting as a heat sink and the lattice pattern cutouts allow for passive cooling. Even though it's not super thin, it is much thinner than other high brightness displays, and unlike many of those, the XDR stays completely silent. The infamous stand is the highest quality, most stable stand that I have ever used, and I love the quick magnetic attachment. I've talked to many people that bought an XDR and every single one of them also ordered the stand and are very happy with it. The only complaint some of them had, myself including, is the price. The stand really should have been around $500 and the VESA adapter about $100, but that is Apple being Apple. On the front, the entire panel is glass with bezels that are really impressively thin, especially for the size of the display. Now, if you opt for the nano texture model, reflections are all but gone without having that ugly matte coating which ruins contrast and smears detail, but I didn't opt for that one. Overall, the look and feel of the display is top notch. It really complements Apple's computers and gets the approval of all the people who pleaded for another Apple display for so many years. And now many of them can finally ditch the LG 5K displays that they despised if they can spend this much money that is. Just like the LG 5K, the display has no power buttons, menus, or anything else. It is controlled through the only available input, which is Thunderbolt 3. This makes it super simple to use, and you can adjust the settings and brightness with software through your Mac, but that also limits the capabilities when you're in Windows. Unlike the LG, the XDR uses newer DisplayPort technology, which not only allows for 6K and 10-bit HDR, but it also makes it compatible with more computers, which we showed off in our first test video. Definitely check that video out after this one, but to give you a quick overview, the XDR has great backwards compatibility and will even work with the 2013 Mac Pro or the older MacBook Airs using a Thunderbolt 3 to 2 adapter. But keep in mind that the resolution will go down to either 5K like on the iMac Pro or MacBook Air, or even down to 4K like with the trash can Mac Pros. That is because their graphics cards and sometimes their Thunderbolt ports can't handle this many pixels, especially if you're trying to get 10-bit color. On the plus side, many Windows PCs and laptops can actually power it, some even at 6K. And on the Mac side, even a MacBook Air with integrated graphics can now be used to view true 10-bit colors, which is a huge feat, and I will cover exactly what this means in just a bit. It also has three USB Type-C ports, which can support USB 3.1 speeds, but if I plug the $6,000 display into my $15,000 Mac Pro, these ports turn into USB 2, and instead of running my 800 megabyte per second SSD at just over 400 megabytes per second, it will run at 40 megabytes per second. Yes, that is right, we are going back to the year 2000. At the same time, if I connect it to a base 16-inch MacBook Pro, it will not only run at 6K, 10-bit HDR, but it'll also get full USB 3.1 speeds. That's because the current graphics cards in the Mac Pro are a generation older, just like the iMacs and the older MacBook Pros, which don't support display stream compression, and a 6K, 10-bit HDR signal needs a massive amount of bandwidth, about 2.5 times that of a Pro 4K display. Now, Apple does have the W5700X coming out soon, and it will be cheaper and fix this issue. Now, before I get into the biggest complaint Pro Color graders have with this monitor, I want to give a huge thanks to Micro Center for making our Pro XDR content possible. Micro Center has 25 stores nationwide with an impressive variety of electronics, from gaming, VR, computer parts like processors, graphics, and everything else needed to build or upgrade a PC or Mac. Micro Center has been an Apple authorized dealer since 1980. They have a dedicated Apple department with highly trained Apple sales associates. Aside from the iPhone, Micro 
Tracker Center carries the full lineup of Apple products and they have the largest selection of third-party accessories for Mac and iPad. Come into a local Micro Center today and talk to one of their Apple experts to order the specific Mac Pro configuration that best suits your needs or a Pro Display XDR. Check out the link in the video description to find a location near you or to browse all of Micro Center's Apple products. Now let's get into what makes this monitor stand out compared to the LG 5K and Apple's previous Cinema and Thunderbolt displays. First off, the build quality is the best ever for an Apple display, and of course it is larger and 6K compared to their last display which was the 27 inch 1440p Thunderbolt display, which does help out with real estate when working and looks dramatically more detailed, which really helps for editing photos and high res video. At first, the 32 inch size seemed huge as I was used to the 5K 27 inch screens, but after a day or two I got used to it and I love the extra space it offers, especially when editing videos. Some ask, why do you need a 6K display to edit 4K? Well, I can have a video preview that can display my 4K footage pixel for pixel at 100% while having enough room for the UI, which really helps to judge noise, focus, and more. The other way it stands out compared to Apple's displays in their LG partnership is colors, contrast, and brightness. It supports true 10-bit colors, meaning you will see over 1 billion colors compared to 16 million on the MacBooks, the iMacs, and their other displays, which is great for professional color work. What's even more noticeable is contrast. Apple has always been praised for their displays, and they are good, but when you push them to the extremes, they cannot compare to the XDR, which in most conditions looks as good as OLED, but gets brighter. The last is the support for HDR at a sustained 1000 nits and a peak of 1600. This is what makes it really expensive and why Apple compared it to Sony's $40,000 reference monitor, but it wasn't really a fair comparison and I'll explain why. The LG 5K and most current Macs can run at about 500 nits, which is bright, and the previous Apple displays could do about 350, which is what most monitors still do today. This really helps in bright environments, and I was really hoping that the XDR could be pushed up to say 1000, but unfortunately in normal use, you're still limited to 500. That extra brightness is reserved for HDR. That's what you're really paying for in this monitor, and not only HDR playback, but good HDR grading capability. So if you don't need that, then that is at least $2,000 out of the $6,000 price tag that is sitting there unused. Personally, I really wish Apple made more than one display. A new 27 inch 5K, possibly an OLED without that sustained peak brightness, but for say $2,500, and then this Pro XDR for those that really actually need it, since I think that most people buying the XDR are doing so just because they want a sharp, color accurate display that matches their Macs. Which I guess is just a win for Apple if they're willing to pay the extra price to get it. Now for that specific use case, which is partially why I have it, you can look at it as an amazing value if you buy Apple's comparison to the reference displays, or as an incapable display if you're somebody that actually uses those types of screens. I've spent days researching and getting feedback from a mix of professionals, and the truth is somewhere in between. There are people out there that are over praising this display because for their standards, it is amazing, and I'm partially in that camp as well, and there's also those that are dissing it, and possibly on purpose undermining it by posting exaggerated images like this one. The truth is, the XDR is the do-it-all display. It's full of compromises and it's imperfect for many very specific tasks, but considering the price point and everything it offers, it is a fantastic compromise. A jack of all trades, but master of none if you consider the price point. That's because Apple is not a display company and they don't want to offer dozens of monitors for different use cases like Asus does. If you want ultra high resolution for coding, buy an 8K or a 5K Dell display for way less. If you want a Thunderbolt display with good accuracy for photo editing, buy the LG 5K. And if you want a budget display just for entry level HDR grading, buy this Asus for $1500 and the list just keeps going on. If you want the best contrast with no blooming, buy an OLED, but that won't work as well for grading since the peak brightness is usually about 800 nits and it gets dramatically worse if you use the full screen, which is why Apple didn't use OLED. What Apple decided is to make a high-end screen that could do everything quite well, one that looks fantastic, matches the Mac Pros, and of course costs a lot, but is fairly reasonable, and actually it's quite good for HDR editors compared to the competition.
For example, Asus has a new 1200 nit peak brightness display that costs $4,000 and it even has more dimming zones, but they don't quote the sustained brightness and the build quality is lower, it is thicker, the fans could be quite loud, and it has two and a half times less pixels. So if you want to have a super sharp display, then that won't work. They also have a new model coming out soon with the same peak and sustained brightness, but there is no price listed. It will be at least $5,000, possibly $6,000 or more, so you can really start to see the value of the XDR when compared to other prosumer displays. And even then, the XDR has more than twice the amount of pixels, way better materials, design, and more. Now, Apple didn't compare it to those displays, they went in for the reference displays, and that's what really pissed off a lot of the pros. The thing is, these pros don't need a 6K display. 4K is actually better for them, and this is not going to be the only display that they set up, so it doesn't need to look so nice and pretty. They also grade in dimly lit rooms so that their eyes aren't influenced, and they use dedicated hardware between their computers and their displays to get the absolute best color accuracy. And oftentimes, the companies that they are grading for require approved displays that cost thirty to forty thousand dollars. The XDR will not be an alternative to those displays, but it will allow everybody in the pipeline to still view content way more accurately before handing it off to the main color grader. A few of these people have already complained and posted images in super tough situations where the XDR has blooming issues. And yes, this is true, but these images were shot on cell phones, which bring up the dark parts of the image and make it look much worse than in reality, as you guys can see in this cell phone shot compared to my actually adjusted camera. We did our own torture tests and accurately showed off this issue in our comparison, but in these environments, even the praised IMAX will look super great everywhere. The XDR, on the other hand, will have this around small, sharp, super wide objects, and this is with the brightness up at a max 500 nits. Here's what it looks like with a normal web page when I record with the camera at 500 nits. I did my very best to show you guys a real world accurate recording of this blooming, so I went back and forth between recording and viewing on my computer, since camera displays are very inaccurate, and here are the honest results. If you are working in a very dark or pitch black room and have a white sharp line at full brightness on a pure black background, you will notice blooming like this. If you cut it down to 50% brightness, it dramatically gets reduced. And when you turn it down to 30% brightness, which is around what Apple actually locks you in if you're using the HDR grading mode, it all but disappears. Not only that, but if you don't just have a very thin bright line or text, um, say something like this paragraph, the effect is cut down dramatically, and at 50% brightness, it is not noticeable. And the same thing goes when playing back actual HDR footage with lots of bright spots on a pure black background at 50% brightness, it looks fantastic. And of course, when you're using it in a normally lit room like most of us will, this is a complete non-issue even at full brightness. It looks gorgeous, especially if you're playing back 6K or 8K footage. Pros are making us think about this, but this also goes for the competing Asus displays, which do have more dimming zones, but lack some of the other specs, and even many pro grading displays that have been used for years and are still being sold, like the display on the left, which has over 2,000 zones and is now on sale for $22,000 instead of $37,000, since that has been replaced with the one on the right that has better technology and goes for $35,000. In one way, I understand why it's getting some hate from the pros that are buying these displays, but on the other hand, if this display can perform closer to a now $22,000 one and doesn't need dedicated hardware to be color accurate, but has hardware profiles built in, and programs like DaVinci Resolve for the first time ever are confident enough to allow it to be used without the external hardware, then I think this is the perfect display for me. Apple had a tough choice to make, and they wanted an aesthetically pleasing Mac-like display that was larger, but maintained sharpness, and provided accurate colors and high sustained brightness while being slim and silent compared to these huge reference boxes, and a reasonable price point for that use case while being somewhat attainable by other pros that might be buying a Mac Pro. And I think they made a very good compromise for the one single display that they are going to sell. If you are grading Hollywood movies with $100 million budgets, you shouldn't use this display, but if you want something that is a great middle ground for a variety of professional work, this thing is a treat. Thank you guys for watching. Click up there to subscribe to see more videos and check out our other Display XDR videos right over there. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next one.